It's the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young going solo for this brief update on what we heard from, you know, the Kansas State football players and coaches on Tuesday afternoon. That's that's the the weekly press conference day for both Chris Kleiman and, and, and some of his players. And we're just going to I'm just going to recap what, what we kind of heard from them and kind of the highlights and in the most significant parts of, of what was shared on Tuesday just ahead of what will be a pretty significant showdown on Saturday against Nevada. That game will be at 1 o'clock on ESPN+, Plus. in case you haven't heard. Um, first off, Chris Kleiman did start his, inter- or his introductory, his opening statement with a brief update on Skylar Thompson. If you hadn't heard, you, Kleiman did reveal on his, at his Monday Big 12 teleconference that Skylar Thompson would miss the Nevada game, but... Um, despite what was initially feared, he will not miss the season, but he did call him out indefinitely. He did go into a, a tiny bit more detail on Thursday, sharing that there was no more, you know, not another timetable, but they'll address it um, week by week. So then they'll assess where he's at, you know, this time next week and see if he's able to play in that ball game. Um, but at this moment, indefinitely is probably the best way to put it. Um, not a season ender, but he's not going to play against Nevada. If we were to, you know, kind of put our educated guests together based on what we've heard from sev- several sources, is it's that he also would probably not be available for the Oklahoma State contest either. I do think that, you know, the the goal and, and what they're aiming for is for Skylar Thompson to, re- to return for the Oklahoma game. So obviously that means Will Howard is back in the saddle. He took over for Thompson after he was injured against Southern Illinois. And, and quite frankly, he wasn't very good, right? He, he struggled out of, um, maybe not initially out of the gate as, you know, he finished the drive that Thompson got hurt with a touchdown. He scored a, uh, he quarterbacked another drive that, that was another touchdown for the Wildcats that put him up 21 to three. But at that point, that's where things begin to spiral. And, you know, in defense of Will Howard, he wasn't the only culprit. Thompson obviously threw an interception before he was hurt. Deuce Vaughn lost a fumble. Um, and then, obviously, Will Howard had a fumble of his own in a pick six as well. Um, he's he's become a very turnover-prone quarterback uh, since he's when he's at the helm for Kansas State, and, and that's certainly a problem. But he did – have the support of his head coach and his teammates at, at Tuesday's press conferences. Quite frankly, they were, um, I wouldn't say they were gushing about him. I'm not going to use that kind of hyperbole, but you know, they kind of defended him and, and reiterated their utmost confidence in what he's going to be able to provide for them against Nevada this week. Uh, even speaking to guys like Josh Revis, John McPherson, and Jalen Pickle, it was it was their belief that you're going to see a different Will Howard just based on being able to prepare as the starter and have a full week of reps and preparation before this matchup. Time will obviously tell, but they they still have confidence in him and they and they believe that he's going to elevate his play just by being able to take the lion's share of the reps for an entire week. Of course, Jaron Lewis will be the next guy behind him. And they also have faith in him, according to Chris Kleiman, and that he's actually was someone that improved significantly um, throughout fall camp and even actually stressed that there wasn't a significant gap between Howard and uh, Jaron Lewis. So we'll see. I, I took their comments as pretty genuine. So we'll see if it becomes true that he, he's going to look like a better quarterback just based on having the reps throughout throughout a week and stuff of that nature it, it could be it could be very important or it could be you know one of those things where um his struggles continue and then they'll have to make a decision based on based on that but at the moment i think it certainly seems like the team is rallying around will howard um and and then, then i think the final pieces that i thought were pretty significant or at least noteworthy was just the respect that the defensive players had for nevada even Jerome McPherson said, you know, this isn't like preparing for a group of five opponent. This feels like we're preparing for a power five opponent. That's how much respect he has. That's how, that's how good they appear on film. Obviously, they've already beat a power five opponent as well. Nevada knocked off Cal just two weeks ago. So definitely a team that, that has K-State's attention. They have the utmost respect for them. Um, and Chris Kleiman acknowledged that quarterback Carson Strong is probably a first-round talent and said, you know, that assessment, that evaluation – Probably accurate based on what they've seen so far 
Felix on a DK. Um, the K-State defensive end, he certainly echoed that sentiment. He even shared and went as far as to say, you know, that Carson Strong is probably the best quarterback he's prepared for in his career, just watching on film and, and seeing what he's able to do at the signal caller position for Jay Norvell and Nevada. And, and if you ask some of the players, you know, like what, what are some of the traits that really stand out about Carson Strong that truly separate him from a lot of the pack and, and make him the talent that he is and, and that kind of ability. And, and Chris Kleiman re, uh, also shared this, this uh, belief as well, but they said you just can't fool Carson Strong. There's nothing that you're going to be able to disguise or show him pre-snap that's going to like trick him. He's not going to be tricked. He's not going to be fooled. In fact, he's probably going to outfox you if if you try to get into that kind of warfare with him. So that that's something that 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 they're probably going to take into consideration is that he has so many so much experience and he's seen so many things that you know you're not going to. I guess think that make him think that he's facing one coverage when and when in reality it's another. That's just not going to happen to Carson Strong, and his arm strong and his arm strength certainly pops off the page too. Is is that something that he's kind of like flashed a little bit in the first two games that maybe was a slight question mark headed into the season, but he certainly showed the ability and and the potential in that regard, and that's probably why his draft stock is soaring as high as it is at this point. Um, he's certainly peaking and starting to peak as an NFL draft prospect. I don't think, for the most part, that he was a first round, you know, in the first round conversation before the season started. I think people thought that he was an NFL draft pick, but most of the evaluations and assessments at that point were talking, you know, maybe this is a day two guy, third round, fourth round, just in that neighborhood. Obviously, that's elevated to now we're talking about, you know, our first our potential first round draft pick. There's some, there's some NFL, you know, draft projectors that'll tell you you know he, he might be QB1 in this class so he's certainly taking a leap forward and a lot of that was you know kind of flashing some arm strength that that certainly was something that um, some NFL talent evaluators thought he'd still had to prove so we're you know just a few a few more days away from Kansas State hosting Nevada on Saturday and, and the Wolfpack certainly aren't going to surprise or um, you know, sneak up on Kansas State. They know that this isn't a typical group of five opponent. This is a team that, for all intents and purposes, might as well be a ranked opponent. Um, I think that's what, the way they're approaching it. And and the winner of this game certainly could be ranked at, after this one. So that'll be – it's an important match matchup in many ways. And we have, uh, you know, on our YouTube page, more KSO shows, not just this one. Another one certainly kind of outlines just the importance and the implications of this contest for Kansas State and what it means for the rest of the season. And I, I would encourage everyone to kind of listen to that one as well. We're still trying to pump out, you know, a KSO show, one at least one per day, sometimes multiple. Um, and the next time you're you're listening to the KSO show, we're probably talking about the important matchups that are within the game when the Nevada Wolfpack visit Manhattan to take on Kansas State and, and obviously I imagine Carson Strong will be quite the uh, subject in that particular KSO show so if you haven't already subscribe to KSO I think we do a great job and have a lot of good information um, we had some of the you know initial scoops on Skylar Thompson and the outlook for his season um, I think we do produce you know the best recruiting content that there is to find out there as well and um, and I'm excited to for everyone to kind of be able to consume that and I hope you take the advantage if you haven't already done so and if you're listening to this on YouTube you probably are you know like like this uh like this show and comment on it that helps us out and if you're not subscribed please subscribe as, as we, we try to, to work our hardest to give you a great product I'm Derek Young you've been listening to the KSO show and of course as always tell your friends